my role in this NUP on the Longley Estate in Sheffield was to be one of the people who was involved in participating in it, in interviewing other local people with others and um, finding out more about how their livelihoods worked and how they managed to make ends meet particularly and we were particularly doing it thinking about the welfare reform that was going on at the time. We learnt how to listen to each other in a certain structured way. It uses asset based community development um, techniques which are a way of interviewing and being interviewed by each other but in quite an informal way so it didn't feel like a questionnaire or an interview. Um, and so I went around with one of the other volunteers and we listened to various people in the local community and they were incredibly open about their lives and about how they managed to get by and it wasn't just financial information we found out actually as we listened to people we found out there were all kinds of other assets that they have social assets like family or friends who actually help them survive it was a way of listening to local people, listening to each other and um, finding out more about the situation. I was challenged to be working with someone from outside of the church to start with. Um, my fellow volunteer who helped me with the interviews that we were doing was from the local tenants association and doesn't particularly go to church. Um, and we had some really incredible encounters with ordinary local people, the two of us. I think the whole thing brought me face to face with the reality again of how little the church is aware of the reality of poverty on their doorstep sometimes and um, also of how we need to be a lot more honest about it when we encounter it. We had incredible moments with people, there was one lady in particular who broke down at one point because her way of coping with the terrible situation she was in due to benefits, sanctions and all kinds of things, was to not really think about it, I think. And of course we just created a space where she could think about it. Um, and she broke down. Um, but it was, it, I was grateful for my pastoral training then to help her get back to a better place before we left. But both of us in the car on the way home afterwards were saying how important it was that she had a chance to acknowledge the reality of the situation she was in. Sometimes, particularly those of us who are more comfortably off, who are better off, wherever we live, um, we can be afraid that because the problem of poverty is so enormous that we can't even begin to make a difference to it. So we hide away and we stay in our church buildings and we do our thing, our worship and everything, which is fine, that's all good, that's not bad, but what's bad is our fear of going out and setting out and actually meeting ordinary local people who probably live next door to us or not far away, maybe a couple of miles away, who are really destitute sometimes. And I think until we actually go and put ourselves in that place and listen to people, I don't know if we are following the example of Jesus, because I see him doing that all the time. I think we need to learn to expect to hear God speak through those who are not necessarily signed up members of the church. When you go, you start to see God at work and even Jesus himself found that in some unexpected places. People speaking with faith who he thought shouldn't have had faith, the Syrophoenician woman, all kinds of stories from the gospel. Um, with this book I think it's, it's a way of actually beginning to engage with this. So if you feel like you don't know where to start and poverty is a big issue, it's a big issue even just in our country, um, let alone in the world, I think, well, let's make a start, read this book, let's really open ourselves to listen to what God is saying through people who've studied it, experienced it, through the reality of life, um, and see where that takes us.